Okay, Whitney, so can you tell us a little bit about your upcoming book and how it relates um, to the conversation we've had so far? Yes, that, I like how you said, how does it relate to the conversation? Well, let me tell about the book and then I'll figure out how to relate it back to the conversation. <laughs> Uh, the book, as I mentioned earlier, I started this blog um, when I left Wall Street and realized that women in particular were not dreaming. And so uh, the book grew out of the blog. I had been blogging for a couple of years and I had a publisher approach me and say, would you write a book about this? Now the book, it's in three steps. The first step is dare. It's really the ideological, we lost Ari again. No, he's still here. He's still here, I can't see yep. him. Yeah. Okay, so um, Ari, you're invisible, the invisible hand. Um, but I am listening. Okay, all right, okay. So anyway, so DARE is why we need to um, dream, the ideological underpinnings. The second section is dream and trying to mine for what our dreams are by looking at our talents, our competencies, um, our, our deeply held beliefs, etc. And then the third section is really building on my business experience to how do you actually go about executing against a dream? And as I um, have said, it's, we, we date lots of dreams. Um, there's a no commitment clause. It's not like marriage. Um, you need to break things into very small pieces and then you need to be willing to actually double dog dare and, and go out and dream. Now, how does this actually relate back to the book it's, or, or the hero's journey itself is I think that for um, women in particular, uh, this is learning how to dream is very much going on the hero's journey of learning how to, um, we, we tend to be pretty good at attending to others and part of this process of dreaming is learning how to attend to ourselves. And so it's really a, a framework for helping us learn how to do both. And what you'll see at the same time is this isn't necessarily a book about going out and starting a business. It's really, I'm an equal opportunity dreamer. So I have people who are dreaming about being you know, a brilliant mother. I have people who are dreaming about starting a business, running a marathon, um, et cetera. So it's really about women across the spectrum, but, but the importance of dreaming in order to, to grow up and be our full selves. And you've got a lot of examples in the book, right? And I think that's important for everyone is to have heroes or to have people to look to, to be inspired by. Um, exactly. And that's part of it, right? Exactly. So I've got um, about 50 different uh, stories, 750 word essays that I've curated, many of whom had blogged on, on Dare to Dream. And part of the reason I did that is that my, my hero's journey in many respects is very different from other women in that I started out working and I had my children a little bit later than um, other women. And, but at the same time, I wanted to honor that journey of a woman who's 21 years old and had children when she was 20 and, because that was her journey. And so by having the stories of 50 different women in their, own, in their own voice, it allows anybody who's really reading this book to find themselves in someone's story. And uh, you've just launched your website or you've told your blog readers about yes, the new website. I have. I so have. What well, is it and what can people get there? Well, so prior to this weekend, the only way you could really find me was just going to my blog, Dare to Dream, or going to my Harvard Business Review blog. And so now I've got a virtual home set that's WhitneyJohnson.com, and you can go there and you can find my blog, and you can get a whole page on the book. You can get a whole page on speaking. You can get a whole page, you know, just basically what you would expect at a website. So it's been a long time coming, and I'm really excited that it's up. It was a, it was a lot of work, actually. Indeed, indeed. It looks great. It looks <laughs> Thank great. you very much. Um, Ari, do you want to finish off with any closing thoughts you have and then ask the question that we ask all of our guests? Yeah, well, I just want to um, uh, say again, thanks. Whitney, uh, at some point, I'm going to have to email you because uh, as we've been talking, I've been about all sorts of, you know, 1,000 or 2,000 word essays we could write about um, lining Achilles and Odysseus up against uh, Psyche and, and seeing how those stories work. That would uh, be fun. <laughs> so we'll have to think about that. I think that would be a lot of fun. Yes. Um, and uh, and the, the question uh, that we always like to go out on that we like to ask all of our guests is, uh, is who is your hero? 
I, I knew you were going to ask me this because this is what you ask, and uh, it, it changes. But, but right now, the person that I'm finding myself most admiring is Eunice Kennedy Shriver. You may not know much about her, but um, she is the woman who founded the Special Olympics and obviously is Maria Shriver's mother. And uh, the reason I admire her so much is that she, here was a woman who was born into a family of tremendous wealth and prestige and power, and yet um, she was told from a very young age that the power wasn't for her. Um, that if you know her father once famously said, had she been a man, she might have made a, f a fine politician. And so she had all of this ability and desire to go on this part of the journey, and she couldn't, and, and had tremendous adversity in that respect. Um, but then she also had an older sister, um, Rosemary, who was mentally retarded. And she saw Rosemary really treated uh, abominably. And it broke her heart to see that happen. And so um, because of how she'd seen um, her sister Rosemary treated and because of her tremendous capacity, she turned this into um, starting the Special Olympics back in the 60s. And she once said that adversity gave her confidence and love gave her purpose. And so for me, Eunice Kennedy Shriver is a woman who really captures these two poles of learning how to attend to others. Um, as well as attend to herself in the way that she could. And I find that um, actually quite heroic. Great answer. Great answer. Thank you. So, Whitney, thank you very much uh, for coming on the show. We'll have, uh, uh, we'll have your website at the end for people to be able to check out. Um, and good luck with the book launch. When is it officially available? Um, it's officially available on May 8th. You can obviously pre-order it right now. Um, and and then during the middle two weeks of May, it will be on the tables in about 75 Barnes and Nobles throughout the country. So, so yeah, I, I just I feel so strongly about this. So I really appreciate your opportunity, the opportunity to be able to tell more people because I do think that, you know, when we can claim a central place in our story, we're happier. And this is what you teach all the time, but I think it is really, really important. Fantastic. And if you're listening today, you should definitely pre-order because that's the best thing to do for authors, right? Yes, it is. So thank you very much, Ari. It was good seeing you as usual. And uh, in the next episode, we'll have uh, Nolan Harrison, ex-NFL player, talking about heroism potentially in, uh, in sports. So thanks, Whitney. Thanks, Ari. Yep. And thank both. you very much, Matt. Thank you, Ari. Take care, both of you. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. All right, I'm going to end the broadcast.